Ooh, new ritual. Hello everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. This right here is a ritual of the Ballad of Alchemy. It's a ritual to help automation of these alchemic chemistry sets here. It's designed to work with items. It requires a blood altar, which is usually not as expensive as it is in Regrowth. Normally it's just like some diamonds and stuff, but in Regrowth it's a bit tougher, so this ritual is actually more expensive than it should be. But, um, yeah, you put the alchemistry chemistry set on one side, the other side you put a chest, and that's the output chest, and then on the two sides, the two free sides, you can have up to two input chests, although only one is actually necessary. The, uh, the ritual, so long as it's activated, will... Um, okay, so you, you have to put the item that you want in the blood altar. In this case, I have just these simple catalysts here, right? Notice that once I took it out, it stopped. And so long as the ritual is going, it will take the items to make that item in the altar out of the input chest, which here you see, yep. Yeah. And it will keep the alchemic chemistry set stocked. Once it's done, it will put the product in the output chest. Now, beneath the altar, I have all the things hooking it up to our ME network. I have an ME interface keeping a stock of all the ingredients, logistical sorter putting it into the input chest, and simple color routing taking it out of the output chest. And I have an ME level emitter, because all blood rituals can be controlled by redstone. Give them a signal and they turn off. So if I tell it I don't want any, you hear the clicking stops. It's turned off. See? But the moment that I turn the signal off, come on, let me, let me, there we go. Starts right back up again. So I will keep a stock of 1,000 simple catalysts at all times. As you can tell, I am going to need stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of that, because today we are working on, we, we are beginning the preparations for, anyway, the major, the major blood magic ritual, the Convocation of the Damned. And that is going to require a good deal of alchemy. It's also going to require a ridiculous amount of blood. You notice that even though my blood network over here says it's full, this orb is still sucking up blood because I have replaced a good deal of my runes of self-sacrifice and um, capacity for these runes of the orb. These things are in are allowing the blood network to pack in more blood than it should, because I am going to need that much blood to fire the Convocation of the Damned. An Archmage's Orb cannot hold that much. And you, you've seen the last couple of episodes, how slowly it was charging with this constant drip feed of blood. Yeah, this is going to be huge, huge ritual. In fact... I think that this is going to take freaking hours to fill up, and I would not like to wait that long. So the first thing we're going to do is that we're actually going to talk a little bit about some other things we can do with Blood Alchemy. Specifically, we are going to be making and melting down essential salts to soup up our rituals. For example, I will get twice the amount of blood out of my Well of Suffering if I soup it up with a salt called Tenebra. Tenebrae. You see, it's going to require these simple catalysts. It's going to require coal, obsidian, and clay. Relatively simple, especially now that we've automated simple catalysts. So I'm just going to set up another Ballad of Alchemy downstairs, and I'm going to get on that. The Ballad of Alchemy only requires 16 stones. It's a relatively small ritual. And a Master Stone, of course. And yes, it does require that blood altar. And note that I have that on autocraft now. I don't have all the ingredients autocrafted. Like, I just made a bunch of these attuned stones and stuff like that. But 
I did things like automate the witchery altars and other things like that that I could. So I have a good deal of blood altars that I can order up before I am before I'm going to have to grind up more ingredients. And I'm going to need two chests. Okay, and let's just put that down in our little automated area. Oh yes, also note that I didn't want to do a whole lot with routing, so I just took a line off our P2P line and put another P2P bus on here. It's still going off that one cable back in the a back in the um, applied energistics area, but it's sending out to both of these dense cables. So um, instead of the usual 32 that you can pull off of a dense cable, because it's already spending four here, I will have a maximum of uh, 28 channels down here. You see? And I will only have six more places that I can send a P2P bus. But yes, that is a perfectly valid way to do routing if you don't want to worry about it. Anyway, okay. So I count one, two, three, four. That should be enough space for it. Um, oh yes, Ritual Diviner. Where is my... I put away my Ritual Diviner. Uh, doop. Oopsie, nice and snug. Fits right up in there. Okay, Blood Altar... Go oh, I, I should have got an Alchemic Chemistry set while I was up there. And I'm also going to need a Master Orb, because... Even though, even though the ritual itself is also going to cost blood every time it moves items around, I'm still going to need to power the chemistry set itself on blood as well. So yeah, it's a good thing that we have the Well of Suffering automated, isn't it? Thankfully, all these rituals are relatively cheap. I don't need to worry about running out of blood anytime soon. So I think I'm just going to do the same setup over there that I did at first. Chest and chest. And I'm just going to dig out a space underneath it. Oh yes, and I need to give this a blood orb. And I'm just going to run the cabling. Yeah, there we go. And I should have kept my black cable. Damn. Okay. Okay, so that's going to be the output line. And what color did I give the output line? Did I give the output line a color? Output line is dark blue, input line is dark green. Okay. Dark blue. Dark green. Oops. I should have, um, yeah. I forgot that it will try and then fill up the dark green line because, because I didn't, uh, because I didn't limit the chest. Yeah. Okay, well that's no problem. Maybe I should make a wireless terminal and start putting access points everywhere just so I don't have to run around so much. Actually, you know what? What does that cost? Wireless terminal. That's a dense energy cell, an ME terminal, and that wireless receiver. Wireless receiver is relatively cheap. You know, that's just Fluix and a Pearl. Uh, dense is... That's all relatively cheap. Okay. Well, um, let's, let's divert and let's make a quick wireless access system for our ME net. Yeah, that is just about as awesome as it sounds. The uh, the major thing is it costs tons of power, but I have freaking tons of power. So, let's start setting up the recipes for that. I need more blank. Wait, those aren't blank. It would be a little bit expensive to craft 
just 10 uh, 64k drives. <laughs> First of all. Second of all. And yeah, I'm probably not gonna ever make... Well, maybe I could. The, these energy cells can be good for dealing with brownouts, so maybe I'll make a power bank for the ME net. In a terminal, I should be able to just create. And that will get me the wireless terminal. No. Oh, I didn't actually create a dense energy cell. Doop, 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 doop. There. Just going to have that on AutoCraft in case I ever lose it. Because you saw it's a little bit of a pain to, to, uh, to do all that stuff. Okay. Now you note that this is unlinked and it's uncharged. So first thing is, in order to charge it, I just go and put it in my little Applied Energistics charger. And I, I don't think there's any other devices that can actually charge this in the pack. So that is just going to sit in there, and you notice it is going to take for frickin' ever to charge. So we'll just leave that for the moment. Okay, so next I'm going to need to make a security terminal so that I can bind it. You see that that is just, uh, it's, okay, it's a couple of components. The only really special thing is this ME chest. An ME chest is kind of like a contained mini terminal. Really, am I out of glass? Well, good thing I can order that now. Just leave that crafting in the background. Okay, ME chest. Okay, so the ME chest. Uh, note that I have a quartz fiber here, so I'm cutting off channels, but still transferring power. It does need to be powered. So if I put this down right here, if I click on the side, then I have a slot that I can put the... Uh, oh, it needs, a, it needs a proper drive. Okay, well... I'll... Okay, so, yeah, the slot on the side accepts an ME drive, an ME storage cell, and you notice that it lights up, and it has this terminal at the top, and it just has, yeah, you can access it just like a chest. And it, it goes into that storage cell. It's, yeah, I don't know. You, you noted that to construct it, it required a terminal in the first place. And if you can build a terminal, you can build an ME drive. So really, there's not much point to these. I, I guess it's good if you need spot storage that's separated from the main network. But, yeah. Okay, Securitar. This is kind of a specialist little thing. It can be useful in multiplayer because it can be used to um, give permissions to your network to people. But in, in single player, it's only really useful for programming the wireless terminal. Because, yeah, it's, it's necessary to do that. So I just take this and I dupe that. And yep, see, it's now linked to this network. So when I start making some wireless access points, it will um, it will know which network to look for. If I had multiple ME networks for whatever reason, then I would need multiple wireless terminals, and each separate network would need its own wireless access point, and it would basically be a pain, which is why it is always more reasonable to only construct one gigantic network. Even though... The the uh, the cabling tends to start to become an inevitable rat's nest when you do that. So next up, I need to start making wireless access points. That is just it's a cable, a calculation processor, and one of those receivers. These things have a pretty limited range. It can be boosted, but each time you boost it, it's going to require more and more energy. So in order for max efficiency, if you have a very large base like I kind of do, I'm going to have to put these receivers 
in each of my working areas, and I'm going to have to then boost it up using these wireless boosters, which is going to require ender dust, which is, yes, that can be done in a crusher. And thankfully, we have the crusher automated. So I can just take an ender pearl into processing mode. Oh, and uh, damn, I need to actually go crush it. Because I don't have a sample of the item for it to uh, for it to know. So crushing factory. There we go. Now I should have the powder. And I'll just do it here. So pearl to powder in the crusher. And now I should be able to just... It's ender dust, not ender powder. But yeah, now I can just... Oh, it doesn't know how to craft ender pearls. Easy fix. We are getting close to needing more molecular assemblers. But yeah, now I can just bulk order Ender Dust. You see, there it goes. So. Wireless booster. Okay, so over here I will make a wireless access point, and I will craft like, I don't know, 10 boosters, and let me get some cable. And where would be easiest? Um, well. Right about here in the center of the area, I guess. I don't even need to run new cable. So I just put that on there. And note that it, by default, it has a pretty good range of 16 meters, actually. And each one I put in will increase it by a bit, but it will also increase the energy cost. And I think they will both go up exponentially until I put in a stack. But a range of 50 blocks is pretty darn good, especially for just 50 RF per tick. Yeah, so if I take my wireless terminal, hello, it's linked, hello, you have, yeah, device online, terminal, hello, Oh, maybe, maybe just by putting it in the security terminal, I only bound it to myself, and I still need to make proper security permissions on the the network proper. Um, let's let's try this out. Okay. Nope, there it goes. I just had to rebind it for some reason, or maybe it just took a while to find it. So yeah, there we go. Now note, this is a regular style terminal. I do not have a crafting grid on this thing. And this pack does not have wireless crafting terminals. So this is just strictly for getting items from my network. But, oh well. Actually, wait, let, let me test something. Maybe the security terminal needs to be on the network in order for the security permissions to work. Yeah, look at that. When I take the security terminal off, it stops working. Okay, well, 
Um, I guess that security terminal will just have to sit there after all. That's fine. I guess I'll put it just, like, right here. There we go. Okay, now I have wireless signal here. And that should be overlapping with the one in the mechanist area. And actually, 50 blocks is pretty darn far. So it should extend all the way up to our magic area pretty well. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Okay. Ah. I discovered the range limit. Okay, maybe I'll put another one under the Thomcraft area. Why not? I am not short on power. It is perfectly acceptable to be a bit excessive. And, of course, I imagine that range won't quite cover the blood magic area. Yep, no signal. But a very easy fix. Put a WAP right there. Signal everywhere. It's also good to have multiple access points because even with boosters, the farther away you are from the wireless access point, the faster the battery in this thing will drain. And I imagine I'm still going to use my mirror to put things into my, my network because um, it also takes energy to put items in. So just for the sake of preserving battery, I will only be using it to take items out. Anyway, where was I? Ah, yes. So, for this input chest, I'm going to need some cobblestone to block it off. I'm going to need coal. I'm going to need clay. Can I craft clay? Yes. I'm going to need obsidian. And I'm going to need those catalysts. And I think that is it. Yeah, tenebrae. Uh-huh. Now, I like to ensure that this thing has uh, two slots for each item. Just in case. So, two slots for clay, four slots for coal... Two slots for catalyst, two slots for obsidian. Fill the rest with cobblestone. Okay. Now, just going to need a bunch of... Okay, and if I tell it to put all those on dark green, it should go. Ah, uh, yes, I disconnected the item feed. Yes, yeah, so and I need to tell it that this pipe is a pull, otherwise it'll it'll begin to fill it up with catalyst. go. Okay, why you know? You should be pathing to the dark blue. Yeah, you are dark blue. You are on pull. You have a free path. Oh, shoot. You know what it is? Okay, um, when any interfaces suck items back into the network, technically those items are going on these slots here, 
right? And it's just because they aren't programmed in that the uh, interface knows not to stock them, and so it ejects them into the network. But I filled up all the slots, so there is nowhere for it to go. That's, um, okay, That that is fixable. I'm going to need another interface anyway if I want to do any more rituals, so just need to plunk that down there and program that. Yep, and that should... Yeah, that cleaned it. Okay. So now all I need to do is get a sample of Tenebrae in order to um, to program the the uh, blood altar to coal. Yes, there that goes. Okay, Tenebrae. Program that. And now, if I kick it on, there it goes. Yep. It's keeping stocked. It's ejecting. It is fully nice. Now, all I need is a level limiter and a sample of Tenebrae. And let's actually light up the stone just so it's not spawnable, just in case. There may be a point where I'm no longer using Vanity's Emptiness for whatever reason. You know? Okay. And... Tenebrae isn't really used for much, so I only want, say, a hundred of it. And, of course, I put my cable away. It is already so nice to have a wireless terminal. Okay. So let's see here. One, two, three, four. Okay, yeah, we have, we have plenty more channels to go down here. Okay, and then just seal everything right back up. And there we go. Now, I can't just plonk the tenebrae, the raw tenebrae. Tenebrae? Eh. I can't just plunk the raw darkness essence right into the well of suffering. It has to be melted down in something called a calcinator. Did I make that deep enough? Yeah. See, I don't have to really put up with the clicking on the top side anymore. So, I need to make a calcinator. Um, that's going to require this cracked runic plate, which is going to require some slates and a concentrated catalyst. This is a highly processed version of these uh, these simple catalysts. You see it's going to take some nether wart, some bone meal, two simple catalysts to make the strengthened, and then, yeah, the strengthened is for the catalyst. But those plates are also going to require concentrated, which is, two, which is two of the strengthened, which is one of the strengthened, some fractured bone, which is even more alchemy. So you see, if I wanted to really completely automate a production chain of everything, I would need a lot of those ballads of alchemy. And we aren't going to do that. We, we just want the bulk stuff that we're going to need hundreds of to be automated, and we'll make the other stuff as needed, because you don't need concentrated and strengthened uh, catalysts all that often. Let's just get that cooking, and let's also make the cracked bone. Yes, you see the strengthened catalyst makes we get we get pretty good amounts of it just from simple alchemy. 
Let's make another chemistry set. Oh, I forgot to bind the orb. Always play with your orbs! Oh, I need one more thing of alchemy, okay. So that's two imbued and the concentrated. How many imbued slates do I have? Not too many. Let's just take those, because I'm going to need a couple of calcinators. Got my strong catalyst. Yeah, this is kind of the trick of doing alchemy quickly, is to massively parallelize. Okay, calcinator. Okay. A calcinator runs on an orb. It can be any orb, even a weak orb will do. And it is going to need things to output to. Um, easiest is to start with a crystal bell jar, which you see is a use of this concentrated catalyst and some simple ingredients. And I'm just going to want an export bus. And some cable. Okay, so I think I will put the crystal bell jar like right. It has a bit of a range, so I'll put it right up there. Put the calcinator here. Give it its blood orb. You should, there should be a place where you can see it. Eh, oh well. So, export bus right there. Oh, and I need a, uh, a sample of, oh, it's already, it's already full up, neat. Okay. And that should fill up to a stack of tenebri, and that should start melting down. And yes, we can actually see it. You see how the glass is gradually tinting? It's filling up with gaseous tenebri. Now, in order to control that gaseous essence, we need to make some tools. Well, the easiest way is to search up quartz rods and search the recipes for them, because I forget the names. Um, the alchemic router, the alchemic segmenter, and the alchemic cleanser. Technically, all we need is the router. Okay. So this alchemic router is, um, well, frankly, it's a little bit of a pain to use. Okay. First of all, you need to set the mode. You need to tell it that we are talking about, oh, and you see that now that I have it down there, it's telling me that there is 4,000 gaseous tenebri. That is the, the extent of what the calcinator can hold on its own. So first of all, I need to sneak click to bind the alchemic router to the element of tenebri. Then I need to regular click, and actually I need to turn on my chat so I can see what it's saying, I think. Yeah, linking to selected container. Now it's telling it that I am using this calcinator and I am taking it to the crystal bell jar. And you see, it begins to fill up with tenebri. Now, I can't just click on that crystal bell jar again because this thing is continuing on with, uh, it, it's still bound to this calcinator. So I need to look away and I need to sneak click to clear the saved container. Now I can click on the bell jar. Yeah, the bell jar is just a range extender and an intermediary. And I'm actually going to, um, oh yes, I replaced my flugel tiara for a thomostatic harness because the thermostatic harness just takes my chest slot. And it is a much slower version of flight, but, um, well, okay. The thermostatic harness requires 
potentia. It stores a jar of potentia inside of it. And that potentia lasts a pretty good long time. Certainly a lot longer than the, than the, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm linked to the bell jar. And next, I need to zoop it onto the Master Ritual Stone. <sighs> okay. Now I can clear that. And we are good. And now, if I go upstairs, look at that. It's getting me, it looks like eight to nine hundred blood per, yeah. The blood is coming in much, much faster now. Now, there is another type of essence I can, well, there's a couple of types. I could feed a potentia to increase the range of of the uh the well this salus potentia here and you see that actually requires a strength and catalyst so i would need to automate that too and i can feed it offensa which also requires strength and catalyst and requires incendium so you see these would be a pain to automate but it is possible i have all the tools i need and that incendium yeah Anyway, Offensa would also double the amount of blood I get again, but it would increase the amount of damage that the well does. And I am not sure if it can keep up. And I am sick to my back teeth of making Ballads of Alchemy already. It is kind of a painful thing to set up. So I think I will be happy with just having Tenebri completely automated. So... I have my blood flowing in faster. It's still probably going to take an hour or two to completely max out this, uh, this expanded orb. Next up, I need to make a bunch of salts in order to, in, in, in order to do the ritual. I'm going to need a full crystal bell jar of, um, where's the list? Hold on. This, this might screw up the video. I'm going to a different window so I can look up my list. Okay. I'm going to need a full crystal bell jar of Magicalis, Potentia, Incendium, Terry, Terri, Tenebri, Sanctus, Ether, and Aquasalus. Okay. Okay, I'm back in the window now. Let's see if it's working. So... Yeah. You see, Magicalis, that's going to require just... It's, it's basically a doubled-up simple catalyst. You just replace, like, some of the ingredients. It's going to need Aquasalis. Basically, all of these salts are going to require simple catalyst and a couple of other ingredients, which is why I automated simple catalyst. So I'm going to need to make tons of these salts, and I'm going to need to make a couple calcinators, and I'm going to need to melt it all down. I will get on that, and I think I will just do that off screen. BRB. Okay, so the simple catalysts, yeah, I told you I'm going to need hundreds of them, and it's actually not keeping up with as fast as I'm crafting the salts. So I'm just going to have a little supercharger on here. I'm not going to fully automate this, but I'm going to have it sitting here for when I need Catalyst right now. So, I have another Calcinator here. And you know what I have a... Wait, did I bind that orb? Yes. Need to bind that orb. Always play with your orbs. And I'm just going to feed that a little bit of Potentia. And, um, strictly speaking, it doesn't need a Bell Jar, but it's always good to have it there as an intermediary. Oh, and I forgot my router. Well, I have the router in the network. It's a network router. <laughs> so we just on to the calcinator once it has some potentia in there. Uh, set it to potentia. Make sure it's cleared. I have my chat turned off, but it should still be working. Bind and bind. Yep. Okay. Clear. Bind. And bind. Yes. That little circle means it's working. 
Potentia, when fed to a ballad of alchemy, will make the alchemic chemistry set run five times faster. Look at that go, and listen to that clicking away, keeping up with the ingredients. Okay, and um, yeah, you notice that it does take a little bit each time. That is why I had to automate the Tenebri. I don't just need to fill it up, you need to keep it supplied. But that just costs a little bit of potential each time, and each salt is worth a thousand units of gas. So that 32 potential I put in should last for a good long while. Making incendium is a little bit of a pain because it requires buckets of lava, and of course those don't stack up. So I've made a little temporary machine to assist with that. It is possible to pipe into alchemic chemistry sets without a um, ballad of alchemy, but it only allows one slot, the top, and it only works for those ones that um, that use up all the slots inside of here. Otherwise it'll fill up the other slots. So it's something you can only do for a couple of things. Anyway, I have an export bus with a crafting card making me uh, lava buckets into this hopper. So all I need to do is take out empty buckets and then like, I don't know, put them away. And that'll just make me incendium. So it's still a little bit of a pain but I'm only going to need 16 units of incendium, so it's not that bad. Okay, let's, um, again, I'm not going to automate this, but just for the sake of testing, because I've never actually done this before, let's try out the Offensa. So, got it into a new calcinator here. Come on, doesn't take that long to melt. Ah, there it is. I was about to check if I remember to bind the orb. Okay, so, bind to Offensa. Unbind, bind to the calcinator, lift off, bound, uh-oh, there's a problem. Okay, uh, we have a problem in that um, the Master Ritual Stone only has three tanks for gaseous elements, and all three of them are filled up with uh, tenebri. So, I am going to need to make another alchemic tool. I'm going to need to make some quartz rods. And let's see here. With that, I'm going to need to make the alchemic segmenter. Yes. The segmenter will tell any tank that it can only accept one type of gas. So, if I bind the segmenter to Offensa, then I should be able to click this and say, has one tank set to Offensa? Now, I can bind this to Tenebri and bind one of the tanks to that. And you see that one Tenebri tank there is draining out. Once that's empty, it will start to fill up with the Offensa. So that is how you, you program tanks to kind of lock them in using the Alchemic Segmenter. And yes. You notice that when I'm holding on to this, I can see the lines of binding. I can see the Tenebri shooting out to the Bell Jar, then from the Bell Jar to the Ritual Stone, and I can see the Red Offensa coming out of the Calcinator there. How we doing? There we go. Okay, we have the Offensa in there. So let's take a look at our Witches. Let me fly up a little bit. Okay. Can I... Yeah. Uh, it is it looks like it's killing them no okay okay they're keeping up up oh, now they're gonna fight each other now they will die because they're gonna poison each other yep that's that's why i that's why i cordoned off the area and why i was avoiding them anyway once those witches die off and respawn it'll they'll no longer be fighting 
Let's see. Oh, look at that. I would now have to put down some orbs of displacement to actually, uh, or some runes of displacement to keep up with the rate that I'm earning blood at. It looks like it, yeah. Um, I, I did some testing and it looks like with as many runes as I have and the Tenebris stocked, it was earning at about a thousand or so per, per uh, firing of the ritual. And now it's earning 2,000 per firing, or possibly more. It's kind of hard to tell. Anyway, yep. That offensa will last a little while, but not too terribly long. And it's a pain to make, so I don't think I'll keep it stocked. But it is. I, I just wanted to try it out. So yeah, it looks like witches can keep up. If I wanted to automate it, I could make buku blood. But I won't. Okay, so... Clear... Bind, and linked container has no connections remaining. Um, at one point, I guess I accidentally tried to bind this bell jar to something. And containers can only be linked to one thing. Or no, wait, it's from this calcinator. Yeah, the calcinator can only bind to one thing. And it's still bound to this bell jar here, you see? So, I need to make four more quartz rods. And I need to make the Alchemic Cleanser. This thing is the simplest one to use. You just click it. Destination list now cleared. Now this Calcinator is no longer trying to send to this jar of Incendium. And I can just take it and bind it to this jar for Magicalis. And I'll have to cleanse it again when it's time for the next element. So that is all three of the alchemical tools. The router is the main tool. It's used for sending things to jars. The uh, segmenter is used to ensure that a container can only accept one thing. And the cleanser is used to clear destinations. Okay, I have the bell jars all filled. All eight different types of essential salt that I'm going to need. The blood is still coming in. I, uh, I did a test. Yeah, it's pretty much almost exactly 1,100 blood uh, now that the Offensa has run out. So with Offensa, it would be 2,200 per, but it can't drain that fast. Excuse me. Okay, so the other thing we're going to need is we are going to need a demon to sacrifice. Now, technically, I could summon another elemental. And that would be enough. But I would have to kite it all the way to our ritual. And that would be hellacious. I don't have anything like a safari net in this pack. So I'm going to summon a slightly stronger demon. Using this upgraded summoning circle I have built. I'm just going to need to place down a, a um, some of these essential salts. Tenebri and Ether, And then piece of glass and a glass bottle and that should summon something called a shade hello yeah hold on i i got that right this is all positioned correctly hold on okay um maybe it needs solid flat ground so I did a little bit of basic decorating and I just flattened out the area. Yeah, maybe it needs to all be connected. So let's take two. Uh, no. Maybe it needs to be on the inner plinths. The inner plinths. That did it! Okay, so note that, uh, yep, that is what you need to do. So this should summon... Ooh, a shade. Yeah, he's not that tough. He just kind of walks up to you and starts damaging you, and he's a bit slow. He's cool looking, though. Look at him. Oh, yeah. Anyway, by killing him, I get this demon crystal instead of a demon blood shard. And with that, I can just zoop. I could summon him any time. And I can sacrifice a weak blood orb to him to tame him and turn him into a pet. 
So I have kind of a, uh, I have a little uh, demon in a box here. Okay, next I'm just going to make the incredible amount of ritual stones I'm going to need, and I'm going to pick out an area. Please forgive the background noise. It is a billion degrees today, and I got out democracy on control for the uh, for the air conditioner. So, the convocation of the damned is going to require a nice big flat area. I've gone a little bit of a distance away, and this area isn't quite flat, but it's getting there, and I will be able to flatten it out off screen. So, the first thing is I'm going to set down a world anchor right here. Going to feed it on up. I'll bring a hopper on later. And I have a teleposer. With, of course, one bound back home. One bound here. Button. Got me home. And got me back. So I now have quick access. Okay, and next, I forgot my Ritual Diviner. Well, good thing I thought I had to bring a Teleposer. Convocation of the Damned. Okay, let's let that load all back up a little bit, and, uh, okay. While that's loading, I'll talk about the other thing I had to make. These alchemy relays. These things are uh, kind of transfer cables. They're, they're buffers for for salts. They have, I think, f uh, three or four tanks, and they can act as range extenders. They're pretty simple to make. It's just some string, a catalyst, and some iron. So, and uh, the convocation, I think, is made to work with four of them. So, let's get on down there. Wee Poof. No fall damage. Uh, this area looks relatively central-ish. And yes, I'm just gonna... I think I'm gonna need to clear this area a little bit just for the ritual itself to build. Other nice thing about the mirror. Because the other end is chunk loaded, works from anywhere. Okay, so you notice I have two stacks of ritual stones in my inventory. If this places all of them successfully, all of them should be used. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Okay, I've never seen that happen before. Is that because it's complaining about something? No, I guess that's just to help you with positioning. Interesting. Okay, well, dupe. Let's watch this thing build. Ooh. Can you imagine doing this by hand? Like, not only placing all the stones in this specific pattern, but then painting them all the appropriate colors. Oh, God. Yeah. I loves me and my Ritual Diviner. And that's all two stacks spent. So. Next, we need alchemy relays on all four sides of the Master Ritual Stone. And you see that they are very pretty. And I'm going to put on my uh, Thomastatic Harness. Because next up, I need to place the bell jars. I don't think the order particularly matters, but the positioning does. On these pillars. Yes, you can see that the thomostatic is much slower moving than the flugel, but I don't have to worry about that flight bar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What am I missing? What am I missing? Tenebra! I forgot Tenebra. Of course it's going to have Tenebra. It's the Convocation of the Frickin' Damned. Okay. Tenebra. Now, I have my alchemy tools here. I'm not going to be using the Segmenter for this. The Segmenter is kind of the rarest used tool, I think. 
So, what I need to do is first I need to take from the well, clear, take from the bell jar to the router dupe, and then take from the router to the ritual stone dupe. Okay, and each of these routers is going to take two elements. So this one is going to take the tenebra and the ether. Clear, bind, bind, clear, bind, bind. And note that the, the stone is full of tenebra, but that's okay. Bind to this one. And note that the relay gains a color when it's full of something. It's hard to see with Tenebra because it's, you know, black. Okay, clear, bind, bind. You see what I mean when I say that the alchemic router is kind of a pain to use? Yeah. Uh, Terry. It's probably Terry, but I feel weird calling a magical element Terry. Well, Terry Cruz is a magical element. Ooh. Power! Yes. Uh, clear, bind, bind, clear, bind, bind. And Magicalis. Element, clear, bind, bind, clear, bind, bind. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I think that is all of the elements routed. Okay, the final bit of preparation we are going to have to do is I am going to have to upgrade my, uh, my, um, my awakening crystal. Put away my alchemy tools. I need to take my weak activation crystal and I need to use it with some salts and either a demon blood shard or a nether star. And those are all fairly easy salts. So, yes, there goes Incendium. Okay. Ether. Aquasalus. Activation Crystal. Demon blood shard. And Incendium. And there we go. This does all the activation work of the weak activation crystal, but it can also activate the advanced rituals like the Convocation of the Damned and um, a couple of others. I think Convocation is the only one I've ever needed it for. So then we just... Um, we, we just need the blood. We just need tons of blood. And that is probably going to take a long time to fill. And, yep. I think we are going to have a cliffhanger here. What? I mean... <laughs> this is blood magic. Blood magic is evil. Of course we have a cliffhanger. Your suffering will power the ritual. Yes! <laughs>